welcome to the Urban Cowgirl Show. Here is our 2012 test site for growing organic Timothy hay. On the north side, which is where the camera is now focused, it's rather shady. On the south side, it's going to get a lot more sun. So we're going to monitor our success in growing a good harvest of Timothy hay in both situations. We have irrigation set up now. Uh, we have rototill down uh, about four inches. We'll do a soils test with our soils probe and we'll uh, monitor the success of our efforts periodically during the 2012 growing season. We're going to use our own organic compost made from manure. Now I will show you where we might expand this effort in 2013 if we are unable to lease contiguous adjacent lands due to the prohibitions, the expense of insurance to use that land for growing hay. I am covered properly here at Chadrack Farms for growing it on my own property, but I'm only seven acres here. If I'm successful in this small test site, I will see what my options are next year. If the sunny side of the test site does better at harvest, we can expand, extend the test site all the way to the vinyl fence that you see uh, at the end of this corridor because this is all uh, sunny as well and we have plenty of water source to easily irrigate it. If the shady side of the test site does better, well, here's another very nearby site where we can prepare uh, Timothy hay uh, te test site, soil and uh, compost and so forth, and it's very, very shady. We will be investigating these options this year in 2012 at Shadrach Farms as part of our farming thread. Our test site. We're going to do a soil probe in two different places to see if we can get down to the hard pack. And we've got plastic bags say we're going to save the soil in case we want to do a soil analysis. We're also going to be testing the sprinklers. Now this is the sunny side, the south side. Go ahead and see how far down, Aaron, you can get with that soil probe and reach the hard pack. Oh, very soft. Okay, we don't have to worry about hard pack there. Great. Come up with the soil. Yes, you see how he twisted it, and you see how this soil probe is designed. Can you bring it closer to the camera and show what it is we're going to do now uh, with the soil? Okay, can you put it in one of those plastic bags? And as soon as we can, we'll label that plastic bag south. We have an, a soil analysis lab here in uh, Santa Cruz County, so if there's any question in our mind that we need to know what are the uh, percentages of micronutrients and all of that stuff in our soil, we can send it. My experience though as a neophyte on this is that uh, usually uh, when I look at a soil analysis, I really don't understand it, so I'd have to have somebody with me that knows how to read a soil analysis, but I don't want to proceed without saving the soil in case we want to do a soil analysis. Okay, and while Aaron is getting ready for the other soil analysis, see our sprinkler system and Everett is putting the sprinklers, the heads on. 
and then he's probably going to test it. But Aaron's going to walk now to the north end, which is going to get a lot more shade than the south end. As I'm going to compare uh, harvesting uh, success on both ends. Go ahead, Aaron, do the same thing. Let's see if we can get all the way down the length of the soil probe before we worry about hard pack. Notice the hose at the end of the line there. That's connecting the east and west sprinkler systems. Here he goes. Let me... Oh boy. All the way down. We have no problem with hard pack here. However, now the Timothy seed, it only has roots that uh, go down about three, four inches from what I understand by studying the topic on the internet. So we're just going to make sure that we sprinkle often enough to keep it wet three or four inches down. Are you ready to try it, Everett? Um, yeah. Okay, he's going to try it. I, well, we don't know if it's working. We don't know if it's working yet, but he's going to try it. Uh, and you'll see the plan. We have the high risers here on the west side, which is the left side. And uh, the risers on the fence on the east side, which is the right side. Okay, and I'm going to move back just so the camera isn't going to get wet if it sprays a lot. And Aaron's going to move up. Okay, let's go for the test. I hear the water. I see it on the right side, on the east side, starting to spray. I see it on the left side starting to spray. We just want to make sure we get an even spray over the entire corridor test site. Uh-oh, we lost a little of the spray. But you can see what uh, tasks are involved here. And I would say the corridor is about 10 feet across. Here it comes. Getting a little more pressure. Okay, and it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, about ten eight foot lengths. We're losing pressure, huh? So it's about uh, 80 feet. There it is. There it goes. We just have to make sure that we are getting an even spray. Well, this is all going to be on timer by valves. Uh, we are going to rototill a couple more times to flatten out the surface because. We rototilled right after the rain, and of course the tires made some rip divots, or, you know, holes, potholes in it. We're going to rototill a couple more times, let it sit for a while, and then we're going to bring our homemade organic compost made from manure over here with a loader, spread it evenly, let it set for a while, and then we'll seed. We'll seed. Uh, with Timothy Hayseed, which I've already bought, and it's fresh this year. And that's all for today. Aaron, do you have any other comments about this corridor and what you think we yet have to do? Aaron is an environmental science major at UCSC, University of California, um, Santa Cruz. No, I think it. I think it's starting off pretty good. Um, the only thing I noticed from the soil samples is that the south one has a higher water content because this is on a slope. Yes, so, I see. So um, the water underneath the ground is definitely flowing this way. Yes. So we'll see how that affects uh, the growing of the hay. Okay, time. right. Another thing. And let me say from the, my historical understanding of this property, just beyond the north fence is a very big cow pasture field that belongs to UCSC. And uh, it sends a lot of high ground water onto this property, a lot of it. And I think that's why we don't have a hard pack. It's got high ground water even when it's not raining. Yeah. But uh, because Timothy seed only goes down about three inches, I just wanted to make sure those roots would find water uh, that we could control the spray and the frequency. And that's what we're doing now um, by showing you how we're preparing for the summer weather and our harvest, our planting and our harvest. Just before Easter 2012, it's starting to get spring-like. We want to get this te hay test site ready to be a nice level planting area. And we've got the irrigation set up and ready to go. What we're going to do in the next couple weeks in anticipation of possibly planting in May, 
is uh, with our Kubota loader, bring our homemade organic compost here and dump it in small piles as evenly as we can uh, on the, the earth here, which has been rototilled, but clumps are big. The rain has uh, caused some unevenness in the ground. And what I've learned on RFD TV, on Ag PhD, Ag Day, Corn College TV, um, it's a really great way to learn about farming if you never really learned it before, um, is that we wanna get this to be a nice level planting area. And since we're doing this all with organic materials, we're going to use our trustworthy homemade organic manure compost. And um, then when we're ready, after we've brought the compost here uh, with our Kubota loader, um, we will maybe rake some of the piles somewhat flat and we'll see if we can bring Eve, my Morgan mare here, with the harrow to pull the harrow up and down this small test site corridor like we did last year when we had a test site in our property across the street. So that's the plan. And uh, we're going to show you every step of the way and hope to show you our first harvest this fall of organically grown Timothy hay here at Shadrach Farms. And then we hope to let it uh, continue to grow, regrow and be ready uh, after the winter rains, the fall and winter rains to have another harvest. And each step of the way, we'll show you how it went for us. Well, today is April 18th, 2012. We have spread my composted manure, organic composted manure, on my hay test site. At the far end, the north end, we will observe how the Timothy hay grows with some shade. At this end, the south end, we will see if it grows better with uh, mostly sun, full sun. We have all irrigation installed. We have uh, possibly one more rainstorm coming in uh, and we will uh, seed most likely in a couple weeks if the weather stays consistently warmer and sunnier. And that's all for today, watching the Timothy Hay test site in year 2012. We watched it last year in 2011. It did well. We're going to watch it here in this new site in 2012. And next year, 2013, we hope to expand our Timothy Hay farming. Here's a new planting project for Shadrach Farms. This corridor here, it's a about a four foot corridor, it's just filled with vinca. Every year the vinca come up and we have to remove it. It is not a place where my horses or my cows browse and graze. So what I'm gonna do is have my helpers remove this vinca, maybe even uproot it if possible. And we have water. We even have some sprinkler risers down the corridor. We're going to prepare this soil between the uh, fences uh, for growing carrots. My horses and my cows love carrots. They already browse and graze on every other single square inch of uh, property here. Uh, so uh, this is, uh, I'm kind of at a last resort here. Can I use this corridor? Is it too shady? Is the soil good? Uh, it's almost May of 2012, and that's a good time to be planting. So, can I use this corridor um, to grow some carrots for the livestock at Shadrach Farms? One concern I have here is the space between the bottom rails and under the bottom rail. I may want to add another rail onto this three rail ranch fencing so that the horses won't uh, try to scooch under or reach under and get those carrots before we're ready to pick them. So here's the rest of the corridor. Much 
more shady here because we're on the creek bank full of uke trees. It's going to be like another farming experiment. And then if we're successful this year and or next year, maybe we can find another place to do it uh, with uh, maybe some extra portable paneling to keep them away from the area. Uh, depends. Do we need sun? Do we need shade? Uh, how much water do we need? How good will the soil be? But one thing I can tell you for sure is that I want to get rid of this vinca and use this soil to grow something yummy. This is Sonia Sokolo, the Urban Cowgirl, triple W, urbancowgirlchannel.com. Well, it's almost the end of April and <clears throat> we have cleared out vinca in the first arm of this carrot corridor. And so today we're going to bring our rototiller with our small garden tractor and see if we're able to rototill this area. Otherwise, it'll have to be done by hand. We uh, expect to be able to plant carrots all along that fence at the far end of the camera's view. And then on the left-hand side, there's another corridor with some gates at the end so that we can go through the gates, turn around and come back and rototill the other direction. That's our plan. It's uh, almost May and we hope to plant in early May. End of April, we have seeded the Timothy hayseed over the organic compost covered with nitrogen shavings. And now we will observe, <coughs> excuse me, observe uh, growth patterns in the partial shade and uh, more sun areas. Well, you can see that my carrot corridor has not made much progress last week. As a matter of fact, we have waist high thistles that are flowering here in the corridor, as well as more vinca. We continue to try to remove the undesirable plant growth and prepare this corridor that has water at various sources for growing some organic carrots at Shadrach Farms. Well, it is April 30th and I am observing my Timothy Hay plot. There are some other sprigs coming up on this north end which gets uh, some shade, more so than the south end. And so far on the south end, which I call the sunny end, I'm not seeing any sprigs yet. Here is the growth on May 6, 2012 of my organic Timothy hay. Very nicely emerging through the organic compost covered by nitrogen shavings. This is the north end that gets more shade. Now, for comparison, look at the south end. Same organic compost, nitrogen shavings, same amount of seeds, but most clearly, Timothy Hay likes partial shade. Well, it's May 18, 2012. All the vinca has been removed the carrot corridor is ready to be planted and it goes all the way down that fence line to the creek bank. We'll uh, monitor uh, the problems that we have in getting some carrots grown here at Shadrach Farms in the space that otherwise is not being used for browsing and grazing. May 18, 2012, our Timothy hay is emerging. We have turned on the irrigation. We have some sunny days. It clearly is emerging more quickly on the north end that gets partial shade. We're planting our carrots today. We're starting it down this corridor, which was filled with vinca. We got rid of the vinca. We're gonna have to probably 
keep getting rid of Inca because it's a very pesty kind of uh, ground cover. Um, Scott is using a hand tool to prepare the seed bed for the carrot seeds. Uh, go ahead and show us what you do. This corridor is too narrow and has too many pipes underneath it for irrigation and so forth to bring in any kind of tractors or rototillers. But the ground, we, we pre-soaked it for the last week or so, and uh, yeah, it's working pretty good to loosen up the soil. As you're showing, can you kind of turn around and show it? We're doing some urban farming here, and there may be other people who want to farm in urban, rural settings. Okay, then the objective is to make a furrow down the center, drop in this seed, and bring here to this corridor all the way down to the creek bank some nitrogen shavings, which I get from my uh, local central home supply. It's nitrogen enriched shavings. We're going to cover the furrows, cover the seeds, so we hope that the ground squirrels, the deer, and all of the predators that live on my creek bank here don't come in and eat the carrots before we can harvest them for my horses. That's our objective. Okay, this is going to be a, a project that's going to take, since we're doing it by hand, probably several days. And uh, we probably won't show you again how it's doing until the end of the summer. And this is the very beginning of the summer. The other thing we're going to do, though, we're going to turn off the camera. We're going to walk through some of my nearby pastures because I'm trying to uh, get ready for planting of Bermuda seed. I bought over $650 worth of Bermuda seed. Uh, Bermuda should be planted when the weather's warm. We are uh, in the middle of May. By June, first week in June, I expect the weather to be more consistently in the mid-70s, which is when we're going to plant Bermuda. But um, I don't want to till uh, if I can help it, I w and I don't want to spray if I can help it. I want to do this organically. I want to enrich my pastures everywhere for a nice thick carpet of browsing and grazing pasture grass. So we're going to turn off the camera now and go to some of the problem areas nearby here to show you what I mean about hoping that Bermuda will solve the problem. Shadrack Farms is a beautiful piece of property in the urban rural setting of West Santa Cruz. Uh, when I bought it, however, uh, it was kind of a mess. It was $20,000 of cleanup because the people that owned it prior were not respectful. They were not stewards of the land. And to this day, it's about 16 years since I've owned, first owned this property, I'm picking up pieces of glass that keep coming up through the soil into my pastures. And I'm always worried that my horses will accidentally ingest these pieces of glass, but uh, they just keep coming up. So it's an ongoing process of dealing with that problem. Now here's another problem. These earth mounds are uh, from probably ground squirrels and gophers. And I don't want to kill any animals. I want to coexist with them. Uh, so uh, I'm hoping that if we can plant Bermuda here, the roots are so invasive that it will make it undesirable for the uh, rodents to work their way up from their tunnels, they'll find someplace else to go to um, see the sunlight. Uh, I find this to be true in my pastures across the street because I own some land there too, uh, because I planted Bermuda there several years ago and I don't have this kind of problem over there at all. So I uh, attribute that to the fact that the uh, the ground squirrels, the gophers, the rodents are finding other ways to come up to the surface and choose not to invade my grazing areas. So that's one thing we're going to do here, one reason we're going to plant Bermuda here. And another reason is, I'm pointing to it, there's some invasive weeds coming up where I'm pointing. Uh, and it's almost hopeless to try to uproot them when they come up. I 
come up every year. Uh, in my other pastures across the street, I hardly have invasive weeds at all. Again, I attribute it to the Bermuda invasiveness. I believe that the Bermuda is so strong-rooted and so pervasive that the other weeds that we don't want to have to constantly pull up and discard, that the other weeds are not coming up. And if they do, they get choked out very soon so that it doesn't become a problem uh, that we can see. And it doesn't seem to be a problem at all for grazing and browsing uh, by my livestock. Now here is an area that is yellow. Uh, why is this happening in the middle of my gra uh, grazing and browsing pasture? Uh, the weeds get so high that the horses say, oh, I prefer to urinate here because they don't like to splash themselves. So if I have the Bermuda, which tends to hug the ground and be a carpet of grass, I believe the horses will choose to urinate elsewhere and we won't lose good grazing grass due to that problem. So there are three good reasons that I could show you here in this one small corral. I've got five acres here. Um, these problems occur in every single corral here and to some extent uh, more or less in each corral, but it's something I cannot control um, unless I use herbicides, unless we do hours and hours and hours of weed control by pulling them up. Um, so instead, I've spent hundreds and hundreds of dollars to, at the right time of year, get this Bermuda seed in because very few people order Bermuda seed. I had to special order it at my nearby seed store. Um, uh, so uh, I'd rather spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars and go to all the extra trouble to get the Bermuda seed here and plant it and hope that my theory, my farming theory, uh, Bermuda is the right way to go in horse pastures proves itself. And I think by next year, we'll know if I'm right. Now, how do we plant it? Well, we're going to try without tilling. We're going to try to flatten out the ground where we have these mounds of earth. We are going to weed it down as far as we can or mow with a catcher down as far as we can these, these high in um, undesirable weeds. Um, then we're going to overseed with the Bermuda and then wherever the Bermuda seed that we've thrown in amongst the other existing grass is exposed, we'll put some of our nitrogen enriched sha shavings on it so that the birds don't come down and eat the seed before they have a chance to take root. See more at www.urbancowgirlchannel.com. <laughs>